Hey there. Probably didn't expect to see me again today. But I told you I, I owed you some extra videos. So how are you? It's me, Richard F. Williams or Richard Francis Williams. And welcome to Secrets of Stand-Up Comedy. I'm going to tell you everything I know about stand-up. As a fellow comic, not as an instructor or guru <laughs> or anything like that. Just somebody who's done it for quite a while. And I'm not going to sell you any books or courses. Not that that's wrong. It's just not my thing. An interesting question came up in one of the Discord servers. Uh, they wanted to know, how do you determine whether or not a joke you're writing is good? And, and worthy of bringing up to an open mic and trying it out and all that. And yeah, you're sitting there, you're writing, and whether you're doing 10 jokes a day or just writing a joke or trying to formulate something and, and see, hey, is this funny? You have to start with the primary audience, which is yourself. Do you think it's funny? Does, is it something that makes you laugh? Because that's the only way you can determine it in the beginning. And you'll start to trust your own instincts more as you get more experience. But I've written a lot of stuff where I'm like, yeah, this just isn't that funny. It's not, or it's not me, or... This could be funny, but I don't feel comfortable saying it. It's it's one of the reasons why I haven't done corporate shows. I, I did them a while back, uh, primarily as, well, almost exclusively as Bill Clinton. This was back in the late 90s. And uh, I could write a whole act that's clean. I, I wrote for TV. It had to be clean. Um, but I don't know. That stuff overall doesn't make me laugh. And if I get into trouble with the audience, not trouble like I'm going to get in trouble, get canceled or whatever, but if I start to not do well, I I have certain things that I know to do to throw out there, quick jokes that I can um, win them back immediately. If I'm boxed in, with a clean corporate set, I don't, I don't have that ability yet. At least I haven't done it enough. And it's, so that's uh, an area that I could work on. But you have to think about it. If you don't find it funny, why would the audience find it funny? Give yourself the best shot uh, of entertaining them. Because it's, you know, I talk a lot about, um, I don't, care what the audience thinks in in a certain sense i i don't rely on them to tell me what's funny but i mean the job is to make them laugh it, with, without that you're just up there ranting or doing spoken word so my whole process is something will come into my head whether it's something I read in the paper or online. And every time I'm doing this, my computer screen's right over there. That's what I'm, I'm motioning to. I have to move it to the side so I can capture this amazing back and forth with you. I'll get an idea in my head. I'll start writing it down, and I'll rework the wording of it. I'll say it out loud. And what else do I do with it? Sounds so weird. Um, Willie just walked around, across the couch and it caught my notice and I'm distracted now and I can't put words together or sentences and have it make sense. Oh, this is it. So I'll get the joke or the bit, the material, and I only talk about it as a joke when I'm talking with you. I never say that it's a joke on stage because I, I don't want them judging me and evaluating each particular thing like this is a joke um excuse me and then the next part of the process is I try to take that thing that I found so funny in my head that I've now put into words I, tr 
try to get the audience to go along with me. I try to negotiate with them. Like, here, I think you'll also find this funny. And sometimes they don't go for it. Sometimes they, they don't get it or they don't like it or whatever. So I have to go back and if I believe in it, rework it. Because ultimately I'm trying to get what's in here over to in their minds. And we do that through language and the unspoken things, the body language and, and all of that. So that's what you want to do. You want to please yourself first and foremost when you're writing. And there's only one joke that in my entire act that I've done, which I'm now retiring, um, that I did just for me. And it got enough laughs at times where it still worked. Um, but when I would talk about everybody in my immediate family being dead by the time I was eight, it was just my grandfather and I at that point. Um, and I don't have any brothers and sisters. So, uh, after I do a bunch of jokes about that and I take them way down, then I get them way up here laughing. I look at the audience and I go, you better laugh. I can make everybody in here die. All I have to do is love you enough. And it freaks the crowd out. They don't know what to make of it. Um, it always makes me laugh inside because it touches on a very, very um, melancholy concept that a child would go through that and think that it was their fault. But enough people in the crowd laugh each time I did it that I could justify keeping it. And also it, it works because I go into other stuff after that. Um, that's probably the famous, the, excuse me, that's probably my favorite um, little piece of material I ever wrote because uh, it cut to the heart of things and it made the audience feel something. So, yeah, please yourself and then convey that to the audience. And if it doesn't work, it just means that you got to work on it some more. Or maybe it's a joke that's just for you. You can put it in a little mason jar and put it on your mantle and go, ah, oh, there's one of my jokes just for me that will never go on stage again. All right. I might be back with another one of these videos today. Who knows? Who knows? I think I will, because I got to catch up here. I said I owed you a couple, and then I looked at my numbers, and I was like, I'm one short anyways. So if I'm one short, ultimately, after I do a couple of these makeup videos, that's fine by me. I hope it's fine by you. I'll refund your, your, your uh, entrance fee. But uh, all right, I'll see you in the next one.